Moving right along, um, we are going to go ahead and get right into uh, our first debate topic, which Adam is going to moderate and Connor and I are going to chat about. So we'll start with Connor. Connor, why do you think that the MLS needs a promotion relegation system? Uh, I think it's pretty simple. You know, if you want to get taken seriously around the world, you're going to need promotion relegation. That's, I think, one of the main points that a lot of people dog on MLS about is the fact that it's just like it's built like any other American sport. You know, you go through regular season, then playoffs, and then that's your champion rather than just promotion relegation and whoever has the best regular season wins. Um, I think I talked about this maybe in the first episode a little bit. And one other thing that I think could be uh, a, good, a cool idea with promotion relegation would just be maybe forcing teams to spend more. You know, if you don't spend them, obviously you would have to change financial things. Uh, with, uh, there's obviously so many rules that uh, would limit people from spending at, at the moment. But if you change things, promotion relegation might get teams to spend some money because if they don't, then they're going to get relegated and that could lead to a lot more financial difficulties. So I think it would be beneficial to like kick some owners into gear such as like Kraft for New England. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Andrew, why do we not need it? Why is the league perfectly great the way it is see see what's really cool is i have made this argument seven times so i didn't even need to write anything down about this i have this memorized at this point i think pro row would be great the issue is we can't do it yet reason one why i think pro row is great red bull would have three titles right now and <laughs> it would be great because supporter shield would be the title there would be no playoffs and we wouldn't have to worry about people saying but you didn't win the cup. Um, however, as I've mentioned multiple times before, financially it's not there. You're looking at teams that are drawing, that are putting millions of millions of dollars into their teams. Chicago, Columbus, the fight to stay in Columbus. Um, I use those two as the examples because they kind of stand out the most as to how much they put in versus where they are in terms of team. And even you look at New York's, both New York's are, are struggling in terms of fan attendance and, and kind of engagement on their team in general, right? But if you are putting that much money into a team and basically breaking even, you know, I think Adam and I talked about revenues um, roughly a few weeks ago. Um, and we talked about kind of, teams that are breaking even, teams that are making money, and a lot of teams are losing money. Now, you take those teams that are losing money, relegate them into a second league that isn't getting the TV rights, isn't getting the branding deals, isn't getting enough money to put you know, ads out in the street, TV ads, radio ads, things like that, social media ads. All that money goes away, which means your fan engagement decreases, your attendance decreases. People stop buying your merchandise. People stop buying tickets to your games. You're, you're, you cut your attendance in half at least, right? You're going from, from we'll say, minimum 13000 down to maximum seven and a half. And that right there cuts your revenue. And at that point, you're going to have owners like Robert Kraft who are going to say, see, I'm out. There's no reason to, to be a part of this anymore. Um, I'm, I'm losing money. It's not worth it. Um, and, and because of that, you're going to have teams that end up folding, especially in major markets like like New York, for example. If people relegated and somebody didn't take over that team, Red Bull's gone. And there's no getting back. Like, you could start up another one, but it's gone. And that's what's going to happen to teams like Columbus and Chicago, where if they go down, and I'll even throw Colorado in there right now. They're, they're getting better, but their attendance was poor as well. If Colorado went down, their owner's out. Like, I was surprised that their owner was in for so long. Their owner's gone. Once their owner's gone, you need to either have the fan support to buy it, and their fans were pissed off for the last four years because they sucked. So nobody's going to step in and buy it, which means the team's just going to fold. And then what you're going to do, you're going to see that happen to a ton of different teams who are going to fold in the second division. You won't have enough teams to sustain the second division, and then when teams start getting relegated down there, they just start folding. The teams that come up go back down. They're the only ones who are going to stay afloat when they go back down. But you're going to end up losing a ton of teams, which is going to end up, one, um, 
diluting your talent pool, right? You're going to take the good players from the good teams. They're going to leave because their team's gone and they're not going to want to stay there for another risk. They'd rather do it in England where if they go down, at least they can survive, right? They're not looking for a new team. Or they're just going to stay up and they're not going to be happy because... I lost my train of thought on this one. They're going to either stay up and kind of like be unhappy because they're uncomfortable with the fact that people don't really care. And that's where it all really comes down to, right? Is at the end of the day, if your team went down, it's very easy to go ahead and say, you know what? Forget it. And you're, you know, I don't, I don't need to watch this team anymore. Maybe when they go back up, I'll watch them again. You know that you've got a ton of people at Red Bull who will do that. NYC will do that. Atlanta's probably the only one you can say that they, they wouldn't do that. And I, I, you know, FCC maybe because they have that strong USL following already. But I can't, I'd struggle to find any older teams. So I'll, I'll, I'll even cut Atlanta and FCC out of that, right? Older teams. Look at the, the pre-NYC Orlando era. Any of those teams who will hold up, maybe Seattle, Portland, but the majority of those teams, they go down, they're gone because they just won't have the money to support themselves. And that's why we can't do it. I think it'd be great, but you need to give it time for this culture it's a cultural thing. It's not a, uh, we should just do it because of the number of team things. Um, so I'll raise just another quick question about that subject before we move on. Um, and I don't want to get super into this because when we have uh, Jason Klein on from Forward Madison, I want to talk way more in depth about this. But when I was doing research for that, the USL Championship, so I guess the league directly above, uh, below MLS. Mm -hmm. if we want to call it that, uh, has 34 teams, I believe. It's two divisions of 17. And then the USL League One, which I guess is under that, has mm -hmm. 10. So you have a league of 34 and a league of 10. Do you guys think if we combine those two, left MLS completely the way it is, and had a, what I say, 44-team, two-league, with promotion and relegation in there... Do you think that would be kind of the, a, a working first step toward eventually having a full promotion relegation system? So are you, let me just clarify the question, then I'm going to let Connor answer first. Cause I just talked for seven minutes straight. Um, yeah. Are you talking about like a, an MLS 1, MLS 2? Like, pr like, ex like let the league expand to 40 teams and then have two MLSs? Um, so I haven't, so that's the part of the issue is that MLS has so many damn teams in it right now with the expansion only looking to add more. So when, at the time, as of right now, the goal is 30 teams in the league, mm -hmm. which and seems... They, they're going to they're have it. They already have 30 teams committed. Right, but minimum, so minimum right now in the MLS, let's say there's 30 teams, which is six more than any other league in the world that I can name. Um, I think England League 2 has 24. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the next biggest one. Um, that's too many to have a single one division standing, like a, an England or England League does. I yeah, that, that, that's too many teams to do. I don't know how the two division 15 team team would work with promotion and relegation. That would be something we you'd have to figure out. Um, once everything was kind of set up, but um, doing the USL Championship, we could combine that with the League One. We'd have two 22 team divisions, so certainly more manageable. Um, for the majority, from what I could find with research, those club sizes, yes, there are much bigger clubs and much smaller clubs in that range, but I think it's it's closer in size where if one team goes down, they're not just going to suddenly disappear into oblivion. Um, you have an Indy 11, for example, who plays at Lucas Oil Stadium and that can hold, you know, what Atlanta Stadium can hold. And you have a forward Madison who can hold, like, 5,000. And then there's obviously the many teams in between. Um, so I think that would be a, an interesting kind of step to see if it could work before we look at how we would implement that in the MLS. Is that like a, uh, is that pro rel starting with like USL as the highest? Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, so the, the USL Championship would be the the high, like the top division for those level teams, and then you'd only get relegated into the League One, um, because there's such a a number disparity between a 34 team two division Championship League and a 10 team League One. Like that seems weird to me. So having two 22 team divisions seems like a, a an easier compromise so yeah. you have would, yes so you have those sense. two teams kind of flip flip flop promotion relegation between them and then eventually mls would be the the ideal kind of next step top division for those championship teams that get promoted or win the the league i think that makes sense you know there's like uh as you said it's just getting to too many teams being in the league uh you know, 30 committed already, and I'm sure many more on in the plans. Um, I, I mean, as you said, there's so many teams in the USL. All of them could possibly make the jump up to MLS at some point. And if you combine what's already in MLS and the USL, that's a lot of teams. And you definitely can't do that all in one league. Even if you split them into two conferences, that's still so many teams. And it's just getting, like, super diluted at that point. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think the lower level tier could be a good test for it. I, I don't think that would change, like, attendance much if they, like, drop to the lower tier in that case. So um, that could definitely be something to maybe maybe see if fans like that more. Maybe see if attendance goes up from that. And then um, I would also be curious to see if teams start to get more aggressive in terms of trying to build a better team. I mean, obviously, it's definitely a lot tougher for them to do it in USL, which would even if it's still not all connected, it would definitely still be considered to be below MLS. But, um, yeah, I think that could also give us some light on who are the teams that are capable of making it in MLS if they do eventually merge everything together. But it's just, it feels like too many teams, it feels like they're just kind of diluting from each other already with just having everybody in the league. Like, I was trying to take a look at uh, some of the attendance numbers for LA because LAFC came in and from 2018 to 2019 LA Galaxy saw a 5% decrease in their attendance so you're taking people away from other fan bases by adding in all these teams I'm sure you're grabbing some new people but you know if if you're not having this pro rel then you're starting to like grab each other's fan bases and it's just it's it's like it's dispersing the fan base as opposed to like getting more people yeah um especially once sacramento enter the league in a few years we'll have four teams in california alone which i mean if you're gonna have four teams in one place california's probably one of like three places in the country you could do it with like texas and i don't even think new york could handle it but yeah i agree um i will say and this is an argument for another day. Um, the debate could be made for fans of relegated teams. So I'll use England as an example. Yes, it's terrible when your club goes down. Yes, they lose out on millions and millions of dollars. They can't attract you know the the talent anymore. But from a fan's perspective, that's what fans. I don't want to say live for, but it's what they remember. It's what kind of brings those fan bases together and makes them stronger, if that makes sense. Um, like, you, you'll remember when your club goes down because it's then so much better when you go back up. Um, but that's a, a whole nother rabbit hole that we could sit here for four hours and talk about. So I'm going to make a closing statement here and we can move yeah. on. Go for it. There were I, I just I just looked this stat up right now because I missed it on my research. But out of the twenty, what did we have last year? Twenty six. Uh, or we yes. have twenty six. Yeah, twenty six. Twenty six now. now. Yeah. So we had twenty four last year. Mm-hmm. Yep. Five of those twenty four saw increases in attendance last year. Two of which were below one percent increases. Every other team dropped. At least the the lowest I saw was Atlanta dropped by a percent, but I'm not 
putting in there. Seattle dropped by a percent, but I'm not I'm not really looking at that either because they both were over 100 percent of their capacity, right? Right. The smallest non like focused drop was Orlando City at 4.6 percent of their attendance from the year before. You go down, that number's going to increase exponentially. You've got Minnesota who dropped 17 and a half percent because they changed um, locations. So that's that's also understandable. But Red Bull Arena is looking at 7.1 percent. They've got the lowest um, outside of Chicago Fire, the lowest uh, stadium sellout rate in the league. Yeah, Red Bull if Arena. Red Bull go is... down. Chicago go down. Their team isn't going to follow them. It doesn't matter how close you bring them together. You know what I mean? The, and the owners don't care because they know that they're already hemorrhaging money because their team's not bringing in the fans. Once those fans go, it's over. So I'm saying not yet. You have to be patient with it. Yeah. Um, I will make the the excuse for Red Bull Arena that it is in the middle of nowhere. It's not an excuse. They knew that going in. I, I mean, yes. I'm going to bag on them on here because they knew that going in. Yes. And, and they I, chose not to do anything about it. You have ample land to build restaurants, hotels, bring people in for other reasons than that. And they yeah. chose not to do it. And that's on them. And that's, yeah, that's about the, it. Some of, some of like that direct surrounding area right across the street from the stadium is is fairly nice compared to yes. what it used to be. But, and it's getting better. But, yes. But no, it's it's a pain it's to get It's been bad to. for over 10 years. Like they don't, the, the reason their attendance sucks is because it's been bad for 10 years. Right. It seems to be good. Area's been awful. Right. And Andrew and I can confirm that it is horrendous to get to from Long Island. Do not get me started. I will. It only took us four hours instead of an hour and a half.